All right, today's topic is hitter attention, and this is Tips with Trev, the show where I give developing baseball players some easy tips to end their slumps faster and become a superstar sooner. Let's dive right in. <laughs> Hitter attention, what is it? Well, it's what the hitter is paying attention to. Okay, so this could be a certain pitch type, this could be a certain location, it could be a certain speed, it could be the game situation, it could be a lot of different things. So I've broken this down really into three main things that I think hitters pay attention to when they go to the plate. The number one thing that hitters pay attention to when they go to the plate is velocity. And by that, I mean, they're looking for a fastball or they're looking for off-speed pitch. They have some sort of approach and they're looking for that speed. So the more you throw a hitter a certain speed, the more he's going to be ready for that speed. For instance, if you go to a batting cage and you step in a batting cage that's throwing faster than normal, the first swing that you take, you're really late and it seems super fast. But by the 10th swing, you're getting a little bit closer and you're fouling some off. And by the 20th swing, it doesn't seem that fast anymore and you're you have the timing down. That's a perfect example of attention. The more they see the same speed in a row, the closer you get to hitting it, the better you get at hitting it. But now, if you go 30 swings and you finally timed up an 80 mile an hour batting cage and you're hitting them, and then they throw you something that's 50 miles an hour, you're gonna be way out in front because the timing is completely different. And your attention wasn't on 50 miles an hour, it was on 80 miles an hour. So. The number one thing that hitters pay attention to is velocity. They're sitting fast or they're sitting slow. So what does that mean in the course of an at-bat? Well, if you throw a guy a fastball and he's late, and then you throw him another fastball and he's late, he's probably a little bit less late than the first one. And then he's probably a little less late on the third fastball than he is on the second one. And a little less late on the fourth. So you get what I'm, what I'm saying on this. The more fastballs you throw at a certain velocity, the more the hitter gets his attention drawn to that speed. So if you're trying to get a guy out with a fastball, then the more fastballs you throw him in a row, the harder it's likely to be to get him out with that fastball. So in the course of an at-bat, if you want to get a guy out with a fastball, sometimes it's better to, and not all the time, I, I have to say that there are certain pitcher-hitter matchups where you don't ever want to throw a fastball. You can get a guy out with off-speed stuff, or you don't ever want to throw off-speed stuff. You can get him out with a fastball regardless of how many times you throw it. But in general, talking about the majority of hitters, if you want to get a guy out with a fastball, you can start him off slow, drop his attention speed-wise, and then throw a fastball and you have a better chance of getting it by him. Same thing in reverse. If you want to get a guy out with a curveball, you can throw him a couple fastballs in the course of the at-bat and then throw the curveball. He's going to be out in front of it. So that's kind of the velo side of hitter attention. The next thing that hitters pay attention to is location. So is the hitter uh, looking to pull the ball or is he looking to shoot the ball the other way? Is he on top of the plate? Is he off the plate? So this kind of gives you information on what the hitter is looking for. And then, you know, how, what, what location does the, do you tell the hitter that you're trying to get him out in? For instance, if I only ever throw a hitter away, 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 and I throw every single hitter in the lineup away, 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 then by the second or third time through the lineup, all the hitters are going to go up to the plate looking for something away because that's all I've thrown that game. And then if I only do that for the first half of the season, then the scouting report becomes, oh, he's going to go away, and so you can go look away. They don't have to worry about the inner part of the plate because they know I'm going to go away. So you can kind of manipulate this. You can go the first time where you face a hitter and you try to get him out away. So you throw a fastball away and a couple cutters and a slider away. But then the next at bat, you might throw him, um, you might want to get him out inside. So you may throw him a first pitch slider away. And then you might go a couple fastballs inside because now he's not looking in there. He's started to look away. Everything that he's seen has been away. And now you throw him inside. Now he's paying attention to inside. Now you can go back away. Same thing works up and down. If you're only throwing a, a fastball up in the zone, then the hitter is going to start to look up in the zone. And then when you do throw a fastball down in the zone, it's going to be weird. It's going to be different. It's going to look different to the hitter, and it's going to have a better chance of freezing him because he's going to look up here, and then the ball's down here, and it, it just looks different out of the hand. So this is another way you can kind of manipulate getting freezes on, uh, on certain pitches or playing back and forth, making sure the hitter's off timing with where you're leading 
him to go. Uh, same thing with movement. If you throw a lot of the sliders to a hitter and they're always moving away from him, he's going to start seeing a ball and expecting it to move away and leaning out. But if you throw something that looks like a slider and it goes the other way, it's going to surprise him. So these are some of the things that you have to keep in mind when you're facing a hitter and the kind of back and forth chess match of keeping the hitter off of what you're trying to do to him. And the last thing that I think hitters pay attention to is the game situation. And it's important. If you come up and you're going to face a pitcher and there's a guy on third with one out, you're a lot more likely to be trying to elevate the ball to drive in that run, get a sack fly, or hit a homer or something like that, than you are with maybe two outs and a guy on third. Two outs and a man on third, you're trying to get a hit. One out and a man on third, you're trying to hit the ball in the air, most likely. Uh, same thing with, you know, man on, uh, let's say, first and third, and there's a hit and run. There's a possibility of a hit and run, maybe one out. You're going to try to spray the ball on the ground somewhere to the opposite field, um, potentially hitting into a double play there, potentially not. It, so, But it all changes what the hitter is trying to do. Uh, if it's the first inning and there's nobody on base and it's the three hitter, he might be trying to hit a home run. But if it's the seventh inning and they're down by four and there's two outs and nobody on, he is a lot more likely to just try to get on base as opposed to doing damage. So these things all change what a hitter is going to do in the box and how certain pitch types will affect what he's going to do in the box. So paying attention to what the hitter is trying to accomplish and then going away from that or um, throwing pitches that make that more difficult to accomplish can be a, an effective strategy. For instance, if someone's trying to elevate the ball, generally speaking, balls that they're laid on are elevated and balls that they're early on are rolled over and put on the ground, generally speaking, not always. So if he's trying to hit the ball in the air, then balls breaking down and slower are gonna be better at getting him to hit the ball on the ground than fastballs that are up in the zone and harder where he's gonna be laid on it. Um, if he's trying to hit the ball on the ground and you want him to pop it up, let's say a guy's up there trying to bunt and he wants to get the ball on the ground, well then fastballs that are staying up in the zone and are faster are gonna have a better chance of getting on the top part of the barrel and having him pop it up. So these are all things that you can kind of take into account when you're figuring out what you're going to try to do to a hitter who you may not have a lot of information on. At the big league level, we have a lot of information on the hitters, so we kind of know how we're going to approach them regardless. We know where their holes are and where they aren't. But at the minor league level, you don't have nearly as much information. And in college, you have even less. And in high school, even less. And then in youth ball, you don't really have any information at all. So understanding how the how these things kind of balance each other out and back and forth and how you can lead a hitter one way to then surprise him over here and then lead him back this way and then get him out over here helps young pitchers hopefully understand the chess match and get better at that. So hitter attention. Number one, velo. Number two, location. Number three, game situation. Figure out what the hitter's trying to do. Then you can figure out how to manipulate that, keep him off timing, and give yourself a better chance for success. So that's what I got for you today. That's the episode. Hit our attention and how to manipulate it.